The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, eighth chapter, text number forty eight, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on May tenth, nineteen seventy three, in Los Angeles. Translation King Yudhishthir said, uh, O oh my lot, I am the most sinful man. <clears throat> Just see my heart, which is full of ignorance. This body, which is ultimately meant for others, has killed many, many phalanxes of men. So, anyone explaining? You can explain. This uh, King Yudhishthir is uh, is lamenting that uh, the body, this material body, uh, does not actually belong to us. We can even see uh, relatively that the material body belongs. Well, while we well we are inside this material body, it belongs to uh, uh, the family. Uh, we have debts to pay to so many living entities, to uh, our our forefathers, our family. It uh, belongs to our country. Our country takes it and says, you f- take your body and you fight in Vietnam or you uh, uh, do this kind of work or you don't do this. Uh, it's subject to the religion we're born in. It's subject to so many rules and regulations uh, beyond ourselves. This body, even while we're in it, does not belong to us. And before we came into this body, it was matter belonging to someone else. And after we leave this body, uh, as it said in the purport, while there is life in the body, it is meant for the service of others. And when it is dead, it is meant to be eaten up by dogs and jackals or maggots. So after death, the body is disposed of in different ways. Some people bury the body. In that case, the worms take the body. Some people burn the body. Uh, in that case, it's uh, consumed by fire and becomes ashes. This <coughs> one word, parakasya, is very important. Uh, if you walk, somebody is working very hard. Nobody is interested to work very hard for others. That is not the material pleasure. Everyone wants uh, his own satisfaction, means sense gratification. So those who are in the bodily concept of life, they are working for their bodily sense gratification. But if we consider philosophically, we'll see that the, even this body does not belong to me. Therefore it is very important. Parakash, from the very beginning, the body was given by father and mother. So, if anyone creates something, so that thing belongs to the Creator. If the father and mother has created this body, then from the very beginning the body belongs to the father and mother. And actually in the childhood, uh, as the father and mother says, Sit, sit down here, eat these, don't go there. Everything is controlled by the father and mother. And originally given by the father and mother. So how he can claim this is my body? From the very beginning. Then somebody maintains you. Suppose you are working in office in a factory, so actually that body belongs to him, the maintainer, just like a dog. The master maintains it, and the dog's body is meant for the service of that master. As soon as the master indicates, uh, you do this, immediately he does it. Uh, dog has no independence, practical. So in this way, the body belongs to the master. In the beginning, body belongs to the father and mother. 
Then if you grow up, then body belongs to your country. In this way, go up to the death point, and after that also the body belongs to others. And there are three stages, uh, three different kinds of transformation of this body after death. Uh, stool, ashes, and worm, uh, yeah, earth or dirt. Uh, according to the uh, Vedic civilization, the body is born into ashes. So the body becomes ashes. And somebody throws the body to be eaten up by some animal. <coughs> the Parsi community in India, they throw the body to be eaten by the vultures. That is their system. So after eating the vulture, they pass to, so body becomes to. Is there any scientist to take this tool of vulture and make again the body? The body has turned to be stool. The body has turned to be ashes. Why not take little ashes and turn it to again body? Scientific method. Is it possible? So this is called a jnanam. If you work for your own thing, there is some sense. But if you are working for others only, you have no claim, and day and night hard work, then what is that intelligence? That is ashes intelligence, ash. Ash just like works very hard, not for himself. He works for the washer, for carrying tons of cloth on his back and for a morsel of grass. So <coughs> in the actual sense also, if you go to see a gentleman, busy gentleman, businessman, Ask him, do you want to talk with you something about Krishna consciousness? Oh, I have no time. I have no time, sir. Uh, why? I am very busy. Why you are busy? Not for business. What is this business for? For maintaining my family. Uh, so in this way, ultimately, his thinking is working for uh, himself, but he is working for others. So our intelligence is, if we have to work for others and sacrifice this body for others, why not for Krishna? That is our plan. If I am whole time, whole duration of time where you, I am working for others, uh, others means ultimately my senses. The senses are others. Kamadinam kotidhana kotidha palita dunnidisha. My senses dictating, you stick to this woman and go to hell. Yes, I am ready. Yes. <coughs> Kam, lust. So I am servant of the lust. Neither I am servant of the woman, a servant of this man or that man. I am servant of my lust. And the lust is dictating that you do this nonsense. Yes, I will do. Uh, yes, I will do. See, in this way we are actually servant of our senses and of dictation of the senses. This is our position. Kamadinam kutidhāna kutidhā palita durnidesha. Dundidesha means nirdesh, means direction. And dundidesha means bad direction. 
just like people that doing so many sinful activities for maintaining this body. But at the ultimate analysis, the body belongs to somebody else. Just we are fool. That I am doing so much sinful activities for others. Uh, this is sense. But one, everyone is under this ignorance. Although he is working for others, he is thinking I am working for myself, myself for my interests. Gati vidu sārta gati ni Vishnu. These rascals, they do not know what is actually his self-interest. He is working for others' interest, but is thinking that I am working for my interest. This is ajna. Therefore, Yudhishthira Mahārāja says, Aho me pasatāṁ ajñānaṁ. Just see how much foolish I am. I am foolish. I am. <coughs> this body, I may be king, but this body, although I am king, if I do not discharge my duties nicely, president or king or very big man, immediately uh, votes will be against me. So I am working for others. Uh, I have to keep, just like recently in your country, the Democratic Party, and what is the other party? Republic Party. So many things are going on. Uh, Agya. Uh, this is Agya. Philosophy means to, to see intelligently. Darshan, the a, a translation of philosophy means darshan. Darshan means seeing. Philosophy means to see the actual fact. That is called philosophy. So if we philosophically take all these things, we are working for others uh, out of ignorance. And I am thinking <coughs> that it is my interest. It is my self-interest. Actually you have to work for others. That is your business. Uh, and that other is Krishna, not this material world. Uh, I have to work for others because I am servant originally. Jivera Sarupaya Nitya Krishna Das. That is the constitutional position of every living entity. The servant. You can have the master. If you don't become servant of Krishna, then you have to become servant of Maya. You cannot be master of Maya. That is not possible. Master of Maya is Krishna. Mama Maya. Dai Vidjisa Gunamai Mama Maya. A master can control Maya. But we are not master. We are servant. How we can control Maya? It is impossible. But if you become servant of Krishna, Maya will not touch you. That's all. Mami Vaja Prabhupada Maya me tang taranti. You cannot control Maya, that is not possible, because you are servant. If you don't become servant of Krishna, you must become servant of Maya. <coughs> so uh, we are falsely trying to enjoy Maya. Enjoy means master. That is not possible. Uh, this is the uh, influence of the three modes of material nature. We are falsely thinking that uh, the so-called scientific advancement, they are also trying to control over maya, nature. That, that cannot be. It is not possible. But they will go on trying for it. Uh, the Maya, there is a nice example I have seen. 
in uh, somewhere in India. There was a mirror and a, a bird, a sparrow was coming and as soon as he comes before the mirror, there is another sparrow on the other side. So he will strike the mirror that there is another bird. And he would also strike in this way he was struggling. Uh, that uh, shadow, sparrow was striking and he was trying, he was trying. He thought that I shall defeat the other sparrow. But that is not possible. <laughs> that is not possible. Uh, I've seen it practically. <laughs> and that, uh, this is foolishness. The bird is thinking that there is another sparrow, strike it. Uh, and he is also striking this. That perpetual striking is going on. That is called struggle for existence. Uh, because he has no sense. Uh, so, so long we are nonsense, we have to go struggle for existence. Uh, struggle for existence in this life. Uh, suppose I am struggling, I am thinking, if I uh, would have possessed <coughs> the strength of an elephant or a tiger, I would have been successful. The next time <coughs> he gets the body of lion, tiger or elephant, nature will give. Jit Ramang Prabhupadante. Thangs the Saiba Vajama. Krishna is very kind. Whatever you want, He will give you. Uh, up to mukti, the uh, Mahamadi philosophers, mukti means to merge into the existence of Brahma. Krishna will give you very easily. But He is very strict to give you bhakti. Uh, that is His speciality. Because to the bhaktas, Krishna, although the Supreme, He becomes within the grip of the bhaktas. Vedesu dullava adullava atpa bhakta. Adullava. For bhakta, He becomes, He becomes controlled by the bhakta. The uh, Topmost <coughs> bhakta is Alarani. So, although Krishna is the Ishara Parama, the supreme controller, he is controlled by Radharani because he is bhakta. Nobody can excel her devotion, her service. Uh, in sixty-four ways, these are described in the bhakti nectar of devotion. How Srimati Radharani excels in her devotion service everyone, everyone. There are stages, different. Just like the Pandavas, they are also bhaktas. But the gopis excel. Uh, and the gopis are also bhaktas, uh, but Radharani excels all of them. So there are stages of bhakta. Therefore Krishna is very cautious to endow one with this devotional service. He can give mukti very easily. Mukti, to achieve mukti, liberation, that is not very typical job. But if one becomes a bhakta, devotee, a mukti will stand before him with folded hand. Mukti mukulitanjali sevate asman. For a devotee, mukti is not very important. Kaivalanga narakayate. Prabhadananda Saraswati says, this mukti, kaivalam, one with the supreme, kaivalam, kaivalam. Uh, Narakayate, what is this? It is as good as the hell. 
Uh, that is the opinion of the bhakta. They don't want mukti. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Mamo janmani janmani sari bhavatad bhakti rahoi dukhi tai na dhanang na janang na sandari kavitang bhajagadi sakama. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that I don't want any material wealth. Dhanang. Na janang. I don't want to be leader of hundreds and thousands of people, president or this or that. No. These are material desires. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is nullifying everything. I don't want this. I don't want any beautiful wife also. These are material desires everyone wants, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejects. Then you want mukti? After all, mukti. Dharma, artha, kam, moksha. Moksha means mukti. People are addicted to these four principles. But ultimately you want mukti? No, that is also not. Why? Mama janma ni janme. Janma, if one takes birth again, then there is no mukti. Mukti means no more taking birth in this material world. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I don't want this, don't want this, don't want this, and janma ni janma ni means I don't want mukti also. Janmani, if one is mukta, is liberated, he cannot take birth again. So he says, Mama Janmani Janmani, let there be birth after birth, birth after birth. Say that it doesn't matter. Then what do you want actually? Uh, no, Mama Janmani Janmani Sari Bhavatad Bhakti Rahoi Tuki Tai. Uh, simply I want to serve you, that's all. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, what shall I do with the mukti? I may go to hell, it doesn't matter, but I want to serve you there also. Uh, so, for a devotee there is no such distinction. Uh, here is hell or here is heaven, here is uh, Vrindavan or here is Los Angeles, here is no. Because Krishna is everywhere. Wherever he gets the opportunity of serving Krishna, that he wants. That's all. Nothing more. Mama Janmani, Janmani Share. Janmani, Janmani doesn't matter. What kind of Janma will we? Of course, from the Shastras we can understand that Suchanang Simatangi he Yuga Bhrashta Sanyat. To <clears throat> take birth by devotee is defined little and another's. Because one who has dedicated to Krishna, he is under Krishna's control, direct. Ahankva sarva papi So that bhakti means he is sinless, spotless. So therefore there is no possibility of his taking birth in lower animal group. That is not. He'll get birth, that is assured. Suchinang Simatangi. <coughs> Either in a very rich family or in a pure Brahmin's family. Because he'll get another chance of developing his devotion and service. In a pure Brahmana family or pure Vaishnava family, Vaishnava is greater than a Brahmana. Uh, there's a great opportunity uh, because the father and mother that are engaged in devotion and service, just like these children who are born amongst our devotees, they are not ordinary children. Because from the very beginning they are getting chance of devotional service, dancing, chanting, seeing the deity, offering a flower, offering obeisances to the spiritual master. Uh, these things will not go in vain, don't they? Every account is kept. Every account. Uh, 
that for the DT war series they commanded why? If somebody comes consciously or unconsciously and offers obeisance, he gets immediately credit certificate. Credit known. Yes. Immediately. In this way, when the credit notes are so much, oh, it is a big amount. It is a big amount. Then you can purchase Krishna. Ah, this is bhakti. Ah, even salpam apiyasya dharma satrayati mahatu bhaya. Even little of it can save you from the greatest danger. Bhakti is so nice. Salpam apiyasya. Just like Ajayamil. Ajayamil, you are the greatest sinful person. But at the time of death, he uttered Narayana. Uh, and he was protected by Krishna. Immediately, Narayana soldiers came and protected him from the Jamaraji soldiers. Uh, Ajayamil Uddha. Uh. So, Yudhisthir Maharaj, is very advanced devotee, he says that Pasadama jnana. Uh, just see my ignorance. I have killed so many soldiers simply for this body. Pasadama jnana me iridi rudham duratman. And this uh, ignorance is deeply rooted in my heart. Hmm. People are, every step ah, they are being baffled, still they will do the same thing. Puna puna charbita charvana. No sense is coming. Uh, no sense is coming. Duratmana. Hmm. Not Mahatmana. Mahatmana means he is no more interested in this kind of business. That is called Mahatma. Those who are repeatedly engaged in this kind of business, they are called Duratmana. Only for the body's sake, working very hard. So if you analyze, the whole world is doing that. <coughs> Duratmana. Varakasaiva Devasa. Babayo, me Akhayani. Now the Akhayani is mentioned here. Uh, one, uh, what is the, I like that word, uh, one group of soldiers, what is it? Phalanx, another name. Uh, regiment or something like that. Uh, composing, <coughs> just like in your country, of course. The seventh fleet, or something like that, was sent to India. But they have got a group, so many ships, so many soldiers, so many. But formerly there was no ship, no aeroplane. <coughs> they used to fight with horses, soldiers, <coughs> elephants. So the, the estimation is there. <coughs> you read the estimation. A solid phalanx, 21,870 chariots, 21,870 elephants, 109,650 infantry, and 65,000 cavalry is called an akshogani. And many akshoganis were killed on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So that's all right. Let us have peace.